Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you want to know how I organize my life and language learning in order to stay motivated and on top of things, keep watching. Los geht's. My name is Dustin and I'm an IT project manager from Germany and on this channel we create content that helps us to be more productive, to learn new things, especially languages, and to live a happier and more fulfilling life. Today I'm gonna take you with me on a quick tour through my Notion setup with focus on the language learning projects. I would describe Notion as a highly customizable note-taking and task management system. It's like Evernote on steroids. So before I discovered Notion several years ago, I was using Evernote. But Evernote doesn't have the capability to do a proper task management. This led to the problem that I couldn't align my vision with my goals and my tasks properly. Which means in essence, a lack of focus and manual work and this drove me crazy as a project manager. With Notion I could link everything together on a database level and it became easier to steer my work effectively. I started with a simple task database and my notes and from there on I adjusted everything fitting to my needs. Recently I did some major changes and aligned it a bit with what August Bradley does. He has extensive tutorials on his YouTube channel and you can find the link in the description below. So props to him for that. Okay, now enough of the theory. Let's have a look into my system. So this is the command center. Um, this is the entry page to the live operating system. And yes, you can see there's focus dashboards and databases. The databases are actually the back end for the whole system here. So as you can see, there are pillars. So this is the structure, the areas of life around which you build everything. As you can see also here in the middle on the dashboards. So um, we had that already in a previous video, but those are the different areas of my life where everything is centered around uh, with the three categories, growth, business, money, and home life and social. And then there are the pipelines. The pipelines are about uh, planning the uh, the work and about aligning everything with your vision. So it starts with a vision, then you have the smart goals under it, the projects, and then at the very end, the action items. So then you have the vaults. The vaults are for gathering, aggregating, and using the knowledge you acquire. So we will have a look later also on the tag or knowledge DB. Um, and there's also notes, meetings and ideas, so which um, is another database. The media database, which contains all the consumed information. So if I watch a YouTube video or if I read a book or if I read an article. So everything goes in there and then I can tag it and uh, yeah, that it can be found again. And then there's the tools, skills and services database, which contains all the different software tools and all the different um, yeah, services that I use uh, for the different areas of life. So everything is interconnected. So now if you have a look at this page, you will clearly see that there are three main areas. The databases we just had, this is the whole backbone for the system. Then you have the focus area, which uh, shows everything that's needed for um, daily action taking, as well as for aligning everything with your vision and goals, and also the cyclic reviews on a daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly, as well as yearly basis. Um, it depends. Uh, yeah, here you can see some, some notes you can take, um, the different uh, cycles, action items for today, um, the dashboards we already had, and at the bottom there are two widgets, one about how the weather looks like and the other one about how time is running out um, on a yearly, monthly and life basis to remind yourself that time is precious and that you make the most of it. This is all about the command center. Next step for today will be to have a look into the learning and mind expansion dashboard. So this is the learning and mind expansion dashboard, which actually uses multiple databases to connect them with each other. Uh, it's mainly about two databases, which are the most important in that regards. One is the knowledge DB that contains all the different topics and subjects that I learn about and that I consume information. And then you have the media database that contains all the different things that I consume, more on that later. 
but on top you just see all the stuff that's linked to each other okay so now let's have a look at the dashboard itself so you have the knowledge sources on top this is actually or these are actually different dashboards for the media database so for example you can have a look those are the books that i consume so for example right now there would be harry potter on, in french the third part language checking italian and the unfair advantage for example um, as you can see here there are more books waiting and uh, here are also the books that i already completed like that i am using the same database with different views to see the stuff that i consume for example here are the different articles that you can see here um, this is about videos and so on and so on causes newsletter podcasts the notes and ideas which that's actually a different database and also quotes that i'm gathering here and this is about uncategorized or no status so everything there comes something new along my way i will clip it with a notion web clipper and uh, just save it in the media database it will end up here and on a weekly basis i will review it and put it into the right um yeah uh, tag it here and then it will automatically show in the right um, dashboard then there's knowledge aggregation so this is about the different subjects that i created the different topics that i created so there are three different filters one is about all topics which contains all the different topics in life as you can see here, so every time, the time there comes a new topic around or uh, I come along, then I would create it here. And then I also have like hot topics. Those are the topics that are right now relevant in life. And yeah, those you can see then here. One of those topics is actually French. So let's have a look now at French to get a further understanding how that looks like. So I have of course the same for Italian and English, but now let's have a look at French. So there's the project. French fluency. For language learning, I also just have one project, which is fluency. So French fluency, Italian fluency, and so on. Could be for a different project, uh, for, could be for a different subject, uh, multiple projects. But that's how it is, yeah. For overview reasons, you will see later why. There are the, all the different areas in life that are connected to this one. But let's have just a, a closer look at notes and ideas. This is the stuff that uh, I create probably on a daily basis. So when there's new vocabulary or new stuff that comes along my way, I will just create a note, tag it along and then review it on a weekly basis. Then there's also the media database, which contains all the media, as already mentioned, that are linked to that. And then the tools, skills and services database, where you can see different software tools, services, etc. that are linked to French learning. And then here, you also see different stuff that I gathered about learning French, like different podcasts, for example, or um, I don't know, scripts that I used when I really was at the beginning to start a conversation and um, all those kind of things that I found along the way. So, um, yeah, the IPA and so on. So all the nice stuff. Okay, now let's have a look at the project French fluency and at the top you can see already there are les croissants and this is a really important thing about learning French you should also enjoy the culture and les croissants <laughs> bien sûr um, other than that yeah as you can see here also this page French fluency this project is interconnected to many other things um, it's sitting there at 83 per percent the percentage gets uh, calculated based on the action items and the goals that are behind that. So there's a formula behind that that calculates it. And yeah, this is pretty nice. But since it's a language learning project, probably it will never reach the 100%, except if I would reach a level like C2. But yeah, that depends. And uh, for other projects, of course, it could reach 100%, but for language learning, it's a different thing. So, you, so it's not a real project, but uh, since the whole system is built like that, I, I, I call it a project, so to not confuse it. Um, also related to the vision and so on. And down here you can see why I want to learn this project, to increase my career capital and to be able to connect to more people, also to practice my mind, and uh, the different thoughts on French. 
And on the right, you can see the different goals also with a progress bar. And uh, those goals will be constantly renewed and filled up. And I also did a video about that. Um, I'll probably link it somewhere here um, about goal setting and uh, how everything works around that. So language learning is a marathon. In order to become fluent in a language, you need to spend a lot of time with her. You need to be consistent. So we need to make sure that we stack the decks in our favor to achieve that. Some mechanisms we can use for that are, first, make progress or work visible. This is a practice from DevOps. Then secondly, have goals that are clearly defined. For example, with a smart pattern that I'd explained in a previous video. And third, use the tendency to collect stuff to your advantage. For example, collect goals and achievements you set yourself instead of physical goods or anything else. All this applies also to other projects and areas of life. So if you have other topics, other projects, you can also apply that to them. And this is why language learning is a great tool to, to grow personally. So if you also want to build a system like that, I can highly recommend to you to visit the YouTube channel from August Bradley. Also, you can start smaller and not overcomplicate things. For example, you can just start with your notes and task management in Notion, like I did. In the end, it has to work for you and for nobody else, so make it fit your needs. Please let me know how you organize your language learning and if you use a tool like Notion or something else. And if you found this video useful, please leave me a like and a subscription to the channel in order to not miss anything going forward. Further, if you want to build up a consistent routine and the language learning habits in order to reach your goals, this video might be something for you. Thanks for watching and see you the next time.